All right, folks, let's discuss Vast uh, and their commercial space station that they're going to be launching with the Falcon 9. So, you know, we're living in this era where commercial space stations are going to be one of the next big um, businesses that are going to be in the space industry, right? The space economy is starting to open up. Companies like SpaceX with reusable spacecraft are giving access to space at lower costs and at higher rates, which is a beautiful thing for enabling science and technology and, and things that are going into space, right? A larger amount of people are able to afford a wider range of launch options. It's a, it's a great time for access to space. And VAST is looking to take advantage of that, and they want to launch a commercial space station as soon as August of 2025. They're going to be looking to deploy their Haven 1 space station in low Earth orbit, with four commercial astronauts that will launch to the facility on board SpaceX's Crew Dragon vehicle. So this California-based company says that the crew will spend about 30 days on board the Haven 1 space station before returning to Earth. And uh, this was uh, during the announcement. Vast said that four of the crewed seats are now up for sale, as are those for a second mission that will launch no earlier than 2026. The founder, Jed McCaleb, says it's a super aggressive schedule, and in an interview with ARS Technica, they said that but we have a clear path for how we're going to get there. The partnership with SpaceX is the key to making this mission happen, and you know the Falcon 9 is going to have a fairing that's going to fit the Haven 1 module, module in it, uh, just barely, <laughs> but it's going to fit it in, and it's going to be able to have room for um, one of the reasons why they have room for this is because the Crew Dragon spacecraft that's going to bring the astronauts and dock to the space station is actually going to be the life support systems um, for the space station. So it's actually kind of a, an interesting way to think about a space station and how little you can send up while still providing enough for crew to be safe. Having this, this, the life system on the craft that's taking you up there is pretty interesting. I really like that idea. Um, and uh, there's going to need to be a lot of innovative ideas as, you know, the ISS is really past its life and we've extended it. We just, you know, recently we just had astronauts replace some solar panel blankets uh, for the space station to enable more power and continued power. And that was thanks to a Crew Dragon mission that sent uh, that those two blankets up there, right? So it's, it's all working together to make these types of things possible. Now, the ISS, uh, under the current presidential administration, uh, was extended for operations until 2030, basically giving enough time so that these other commercial stations, like Orbital Reef and, I believe, Axiom Space also wants to do this. There's Bigelow Aerospace has been, you know, playing with, um, I shouldn't say play, they have been installing, literally, they are ahead of the game as far as getting station equipment up there, they've been doing inflatable crafts, so, you know, really making use of the, the fairing availability and the launch availability and compacting it. In space, we love compacting things to send them to space because it makes things a lot easier. So, they've been testing an inflatable module on the space station, um, before and they'll continue doing tests. Orbital Reef is the Blue Origin and Red Wire combo, um, you know, a powerhouse of business and technology that they'll be able to create these really interesting private stations that could rival the International Space Station in size by the time they get it up there. Um, Blue Origin still has a lot of work to do in how they're getting to space with large payloads. You know, they need to get their, their new Glenn rocket up and running. You know, they're about to get back into operation with New Shepard and sending humans to space, which is the revenue that's going to be bringing things in in order for this to happen. Granted, Jeff Bezos has plenty of money, but, um, you know, getting Orbital Reef up and running is going to be important because then businesses will spend time up in space on the space station conducting their own research um, and potentially setting up their own crews, creatives, uh, you know, content creators that have a lot of extra funds who are able to, you know, 
go up and record things in space will have the money to pay for these types of trips, um, as well as plenty of other scientific, you know, uh, organizations and research that's going to happen. So it's a time that's really going to open things up. Uh, and Vast seems to be uh, a good mix of wanting to go fast and they have a really good option for going into space with the space station. And they're also, they've also inherited a lot of key players in the space industry, including SpaceX. So there's going to be some big hitters there that's going to make that working relationship between SpaceX and Vast. Uh, it's going to have a really high likelihood of, of succeeding. And if there's one thing we know that SpaceX is good at, it's getting things into space uh, pretty quickly. And even though their timelines might slip a little later than, say, Elon time suggested should happen, uh, they have pulled through a lot of times. So I'm looking forward to see where Vast comes from this. We've got a lot of links in this episode if you want to dive deeper into it, including the recent rec- uh, recent um, news for Vast, which happened on June 14th here, where they just selected Impulse Space as their propulsion system. So they're going to work together to integrate those two so that all of these technologies with the Crew Dragon work together, and then they were able to send these astronauts safely, spend the 30 days, and return home. So lots of cool stuff for VAST. We're looking forward to that and all the commercial space stations we'll see. And that's it for this.